Welcome back. All right, today's career video is on Brian Ralston, who I did have to do a double check and make sure I hadn't already done a career video for. Now, with this video, I had a choice, wearing New Jersey or wearing Boston, and I always try to wear the jersey of the team where he's most remembered. But to me as a Bruins fan, I have fond memories of Brian Ralston. Uh, I remember being kind of upset when he ended up leaving Boston, and so I went with the Bruins jersey, although devils it would make absolute sense since he won a championship with the boston or with the new jersey devils i should say did not win a championship with boston he missed out on that by a season but 94 95 when he makes his debut in the nhl he did win a stanley cup now he'd been drafted 11th overall in 1991 um all american player and really you know new jersey took its time with prospects at this stage uh, 40 games played that first year for Ralston, but it's three years after his draft year. Seven goals, 11 assists, 18 points. In the playoffs, just six games played, two goals, one assist, three points. He gets his name on the Stanley Cup. 95-96, not a great year for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they fell out of the playoffs that year. Ralston only played 58 games, 13 goals, 11 assists, 24 points. Not the kind of progression that Ralston would have wanted. But he starts hitting that stride in 96-97. And he's one of those players you can't judge just by points. Uh, 81 games played in 96-97. 18 goals, 27 assists, 45 points. Played 10 playoff games. 4 goals, 1 assist, 5 points. So pretty good time for Rolston there. 97-98, uh, you see regression in his numbers. 76 games played, 16 goals, 14 assists, 30 points. In the playoffs, 6 games, and just the 1 goal. So... Coming out of those four years, would people have been calling him a bust? Absolutely. It is seven years past his draft year. He's at 30 points. So we're seeing people right now, oh, that guy, that guy's done. They should just let him go. This is why some of the qualifying offers that don't get made, I say, okay, because there's definitely a danger of giving up on a player too soon. 98-99, he rewards the Devils for their patience. 82 games, 24 goals, 33 assists, 57 points. In the playoffs, 7 games and 1 goal. That's what he got for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, he did, though, lead the league in shorthanded goals with 5 that year. So, shorthanded, Ralston was very good. Again, very good two-way forward. 99-2000, he did not stay with the New Jersey Devils for long. 11 games played, 3 goals, 1 assist, 4 points. On November 3rd, he is traded with a 2000 first rounder in exchange for Claude Lemieux and a 2000 first round draft pick as well as a second round draft pick. So this was New Jersey going out to get Claude Lemieux and New Jersey was going to win a cup in 2000. So he missed out on that to go to Colorado uh, where they had won a, a cup in 96. They're going to win one in 2001. He won't be there for that. Uh, he plays 50 games with Colorado. It does not work. 8 goals, 10 assists, 18 points. And so he's back on the block. And at the deadline, he ends up going to Boston. Now, it's a famous trade that he's a part of on March 6th. He's traded with the same first-round draft pick that had gone with him from New Jersey. Now goes with him from Colorado to Boston. Uh, along with uh, Martin Grenier, as well as Samuel Paulson, in exchange for Dave Anderchuk and Ray Bork going to the Colorado Avalanche. So you're welcome, Colorado. Um, but yeah, it was it was one of those things where Ralston's coming in to Boston, kind of tough when Boston fans are looking going, so Bork's gone. All right. And the team at the time was in some disarray. And I'm putting it nicely. But he fit in pretty, pretty early and pretty easily. And in 16 games after that trade, he gets five goals, four assists, nine points with Boston. And I thought he played well. Uh, the following season, 2000-2001, plays 77 games, 19 goals, 39 assists, 58 points. He's a two-way forward. He can do a little bit of everything. And again, I was really impressed with him as a Boston Bruin. 2001-2002, as the Bruins start getting better, his numbers do as well. 82 games that year, so he plays every game. 31 goals, 31 assists, 62 points. One of the best seasons in his career. Uh, his highest point total to that point in his career in six playoff games, four goals, one assist, five points. He ends up fifth in voting for Selkie. So if we'd had a Twitter and all of the social media back then, I'm sure there would have been a big push to get Ralston a Selkie trophy in 2002. Uh, nine shorthanded goals that year, which led the NHL. 
And again, he was just he was a really smart player. He's a dangerous player. Nine shorthanded goals would tell you. you you've got to be careful of those turnovers. And in 0203, he followed it up with another pretty good year. 81 games, 27 goals, 32 assists, 59 points. Just five playoff games and two assists. One interesting thing with Brian Ralston that does kind of jump out, and it jumped out when I was putting this board together, he never played more than 10 playoff games in any one, any one season. So it is, it is one of those oddities with his career. But as I've pointed out, he barely misses the 2000 Stanley Cup for New Jersey. He misses the 2001 Stanley Cup for Colorado. And then he ends up missing the 2011 Stanley Cup as well for the Boston Bruins. So 2003-2004 plays 82 games, 19 goals, 20 assists, 48 points. In the playoffs, 7 games played, just the one goal. Boston lets him go to market, uh, which I did not agree with at the time. Uh, he goes to market, and on July 8th of 2004, he signs as a free agent with the Minnesota Wild. He would not suit up with the Minnesota Wild for 0405 because we didn't have a season. So it's one of those rarities where he signs a contract, and, and it was such an odd summer. The summer of, of, of 2004 was just bizarre because we knew we weren't going to have hockey. We knew that the salary cap, the players were dug in, the owners were dug in, and that was it. There was no way around it. So he signs a contract, and players are signing contracts that they don't know what's going to happen with them. Now, he finally makes his debut in 05 06, and he rewards them for their patience. 82 games played, 34 goals, 45 assists, 79 points. That is the best offensive season he ever had in the National Hockey League. Oddly enough, didn't end up getting a bunch of sulky votes. We see that so often now, where a player who's a really good defensive forward will have really good offensive numbers, and suddenly, hey, let's give him the Selkie Award for best defensive forward in the National Hockey League. So 06-07, he follows that up with a pretty good year as well. 78 games, 31 goals, 33 assists, 64 points. Plays five playoff games, one goal, one assist, two points. This is also the one year that he appears in the All-Star game, which, good, he had to at least appear in, had to at least appear in one All-Star game in his career. 2007-2008, uh, 81 games played, 31 goals, 28 assists, 59 points. In the playoffs, 6 games, 2 goals, 4 assists, 6 points. So what's interesting with him in Minnesota, Minnesota is not a team known for big goal scorers. Before Kaprizov, it's not happening. So Ralston, while I'm, while I'm wearing Boston, and I've talked about New Jersey and how I could have worn either, I could have justified wearing a Minnesota jersey because he had 3 straight 30 goal seasons for a team that doesn't really see very many guys get multiple 30-goal seasons in a row. So he was a good goal scorer there, but they couldn't sign him. They tried, and so they traded his signing rights on July 29th for a fourth-round draft pick to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa was unable to sign him, so he goes home again. On July 1st, he signs as a free agent with the New Jersey Devils for four years. It's a little over $20 million. So it's, it's the highest-paid contract he's had. He was at over the $3 million mark before that. Now he's over $5 million. What's, what's interesting to me, and this is something in the National Hockey League that has happened, and I know it happens in other sports too, the expectations of a player who makes $2 million, the expectations of a player who makes $5 million, are such that these players could have the exact same season. One would be seen as a shining success, and the other would be seen as a failure. And I think that big money contract, combined with the fact that yeah, he's getting older, uh, led to more scrutiny for Ralston and his return to New Jersey. Plus, yeah, his numbers drop. In 08 09, 64 games, 15 goals, 17 assists, 32 points. In seven playoff games, he adds a goal and an assist for two points. 2009 2010, he would have his final 20 goal season in the NHL. 80 games played, 20 goals, 17 assists, 37 points. In five playoff games, two goals, one assist, three points. 2010, 2011, and what would be his final year, and it's it's tumultuous at this point, 65 games, 14 goals, 20 assists, 34 points. So he's got a year left on the contract. New Jersey knows it's time to have a divorce. Ralston knows it's time to have a divorce. So July 28th, he is traded for Trent Hunter. Trent Hunter's career is an interesting one, too. Maybe at some point we'll do a video on him. Uh, it didn't end up being as long of an NHL career as I think most, including myself, thought it might be. But yeah, for Rolston, he's off to the Islanders and basically said, yeah, no, it was tough. It was tough towards the end there in New Jersey and moving on is the right thing to do. But it doesn't go that well with the New York Islanders either. 
Um, he plays 49 games in 2011-2012 with the Islanders. Has four goals, five assists, nine points. So the offense looks like it's gone. Uh, he was traded then back to Boston. So he goes back to Boston with Mike Mateau in exchange for Mark Canton and Yannick Rinaldo going the other way. So it's it's basically dumping off the end of his contract. The Boston Bruins coming off of a Stanley Cup win in 2011, likely looking at Rolston and saying, hey, we had Recchi in 2011, we can add Rolston in 2012. He's still got something left to give, and he rewards Boston for picking him up. In 21 games after the trade, he records three goals, 12 assists, 15 points. That's not bad. That's more points in the 21 games than he had in the 49 in New York, playing for the Islanders. In the playoffs, seven games, one goal, two assists, three points. Sadly, Boston ends up not getting out of the first round that following season. So uh, his career ends up ending. He retires in 2013, but he ends up having a really long career. And one of the oddities with him is that he ends up taking slap shots on penalty shots and shootouts. And that's kind of what he's known for as well, is that he, he was able to hit, hit the mask of a goaltender, um, almost hit the mask. Basically, his slap shots terrified people. Uh, he was rated as one of the top 10 slap shots. I think it was Sports Illustrated said he was one of the top 10 slap shots of all time. Uh, but yeah, Rolston, a slapper. And I have to say, the slap shot seems to be an, an art form that's disappeared from parts of the NHL where it used to exist. And I think that, that there's been an overcorrection. I think a slap shot can still be really good in certain situations. Um, I know he knocked Luongo back uh, a bit. Uh, Luongo ended up being okay, but he caught him right in the mask. So, yeah, a Ralston slap shot's definitely something to try to avoid. And if you do, if you duck out of the way, it might end up going in the net. So, 1,256 games in his career, which ends up being 90th overall. 342 goals, 419 assists, 761 points. He only played 77 games in the playoffs. 20 goals, 14 assists, 34 points. So, the production in the playoffs is, is good. Uh, better during the regular season, sure. His 33 shorthanded goals... 14th all-time on that list. Not really a surprise he's high on that list. He did have Olympic silver with the U.S. team in 2002 at Salt Lake. Uh, 1996 at the World Championships, he had a bronze medal. And 1992 for the World Junior Championships, he also recorded a bronze medal. So, Ralston ends up putting together a pretty solid career. Uh, again, I think he would have been an analytics darling by today's standards. It just, you look over his career and everything he did, I, I really think he would have been. But that's a whole debate for another time. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.